Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. I've done a couple of videos on this water heater and the topic of this one is going to be if it makes sense to insulate these tubes here. You can see there's a little bit of insulation on them up there and then they come down and they go into the tank here and it comes out down there. And these tubes carry the hot water to the heat exchanger inside the tank and that's what heats the domestic hot water. And the question is, does it really make sense to insulate these? And I'm going to do a couple calculations to show you what I think. So here's a piece of the PEX that's delivering the hot water from the boiler to the water heater. And it's supposed to be 5 eighths of an inch. If I try to measure the inside diameter, and it's coming out to 673. And if I measure it this way, 643. So it seems to be between 640 and maybe 670. So maybe around 655 is the average. So let me describe what I have for those of you that may or may not be familiar with it. I have what's known as an indirect fired hot water tank. So I have a boiler, which I'm going to draw with a little flame in it here. And I have a hot water tank, which looks something like so. This is made of stainless steel. And what happens is the boiler heats water, and there are two lines that come over from the boiler through a pump, just draw it like that, that goes into the hot water tank. And inside the tank, there's something called a heat exchanger, which takes the hot water, circulates through it, and it exchanges heat. So the water in the hot water tank eventually tries to reach equilibrium with the water that's circulating in the heat exchanger. And the boiler heats water to about 180 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 82 degrees centigrade. Now the hot water tank itself, cold water goes in, I'm gonna draw a little thermometer here, and hot water goes out. So you get the idea. So in my particular setup, the distance from the boiler it's about 75 feet, so the round trip is 150 feet. And in terms of the hot water tank itself, stainless steel is not a great conductor of heat as far as metals go. It's obviously better than things that don't conduct heat at all, you know, ceramics, plastics, whatnot. And what I did was I stuffed the underside with fiberglass, and then I put a platform on the underside of the tank to sit on. So if I give you a side view here, the tank is essentially built a lot like a propane tank, and I built a platform down here that's made of synthetic decking and a synthetic plank floor. So there's two layers, if you will. And that's simply to act as a thermal break between the concrete slab and the bottom of the hot water tank, because this is all stainless steel. With the tank this large, the cold water comes in and goes down to the bottom of the tank, and the hot water comes out at the top. And you typically have a thermal gradient, which I'm going to try again to draw a little thermometer. Down at the bottom of the tank, it's significantly colder than the top of the tank. So it's very hot up here, and I won't say cold, but not so hot down here. And in my experience, the on the heat exchanger, the top one always feels warm, and the bottom one usually feels room temperature. And the tank itself is wrapped entirely in a foam blanket of insulation, the top and the sides. Okay, so I'm going to go to a pencil because it's a little finer. Here's my boiler, and here's the tank. And earlier I said the round trip was 150 feet. It was actually a little bit less than that. I'm going to say it's 140 feet. And the boiler is fired by oil, so I have oil in a tank nearby to the boiler. So this tubing here is PEX. And as I said, it has a diameter of approximately 0 0.656 inches. So that means the radius is about 0 0.328 inches. So the area of the PEX is pi r squared is pi times 0.328 inches squared, which if you do the math turns out to be 0 0.00235 square feet. So I translated from inches to feet in there too. So the volume, or V, is the area times the length. So this is 
this number here, 0 0.00235 times 140, and this is all in feet. So the volume turns out to be 0.329 cubic feet. That's the volume of water that's stuck in the PEX tubes all the time, because there's always water in it. And the volume in gallons turns out to be 2.115 gallons. And I leave it up to you to get the conversion from cubic feet to gallons. So the mass of the water, and this is in pounds, again, sorry for those of you out there, not in the metric world, is 2.115 gallons times 8.34, this is pounds per gallon. The gallon units cancel each other and you end up with a mass of 17.64 pounds. So there's about 17 and a half pounds of water in these PEX tubes all the time. And the BTU is the mass times the delta T. And my boiler heats the water up to 180 degrees and I'm assuming that it's coming down to an ambient temperature of around 65 degrees and this is all Fahrenheit, 115 degrees. If you come down here to calculate the BTU, it's the mass times the delta T, so 17.64 times 115, and that turns out to be about 2,029 BTU. Now, a gallon of home heating oil, I discussed in another video, is 137,381 BTU in a gallon. So the percentage of a gallon heating oil is 2,029 divided by 137,000, 381 and that equals 0 0.015 gallons. So the amount of heat, if this is 180 degrees that sits in these pipes and eventually cools off to 65 degrees is about 0 0.15 gallons or 2,029 BTU. At $3.50 a gallon, that turns out to be in American dollars 0. 0.052. About five cents worth of heating oil is lost in these PEX tubes after the boiler has brought the hot water tank up to full temperature. So maybe five cents is a lot. Maybe it isn't. I guess there's different ways to look at that. But one way would be to wonder how much does it cost in terms of dollars of oil to heat the hot water tank. So over here, let's talk about the tank. It's 120 gallons. And from what I understand, the boiler will turn on and top it off for a delta T of about 10 degrees. Again, this is all Fahrenheit. So the mass of the water in the tank is 120 times 8.34, which equals 1,003 pounds. And I'm gonna round that up to 1,000 pounds. So the BTU would be a thousand times delta t of 10 is obviously 10,000 and if you divide 10,000 into 137,381 BTU in a gallon you end up with 0 0.073 gallons and again at three dollars and fifty cents per gallon that turns out to be 0 0.25 dollars or 25 cents so it cost me 25 cents top off the tank even though there's a gradient in the tank I think the 10 degrees may be reasonable the thermometer that measures the tank sits right in the middle and I think when that dips 10 degrees the heat exchanger and the boiler spring into action and they bring the tank up 10 degrees so it may be hotter at the top might be cooler at the bottom it might be more or less than 10 degrees I don't really know but I'm gonna use 10 so 25 cents to heat it and another five cents is lost in the tubing to deliver the heat to the tank which as a percentage well that's 20 percent that's not great but I don't think there's a lot I can do about it and finally we also have to consider the efficiency of the boiler which for an oil boiler, I'm gonna use 85% because that's pretty representative. So that means this 25 cents is actually gonna to morph to something 15% higher or so, maybe uh, 28 cents or so. And this cost over here of a five cents is gonna again be 15% higher. So with the efficiency, instead of five cents, might be closer to six cents or something. So 28 cents to heat the water and six cents is gonna probably be wasted in the pipes. So what can you do to save five cents per heating cycle? And this is for the hot water. Well, if you insulate the pipes, there's a cost associated with that, the cost of the materials and whatever the labor would be. If you do it yourself, maybe you put a price on that labor, maybe you don't. But then there's also to keep in mind the duty cycle. And what I mean by that is how often does the boiler come on to heat the water. And that obviously depends on how much hot water you might be using and the temperature of the cold water that's coming into the tank. But in my estimation, the duty cycle is somewhere on the order of once a day. So since the installation material cost is on the order 
of $100, it doesn't seem to make a lot of sense to insulate a PEX tubing to try to save five cents because even with the insulation, you're still probably going to be losing that five cents every time the boiler tops off the hot water tank. So the point I'm getting at is even if you insulate these tubes, this piping, the pipe insulation is claimed to have an R value of about three, which strikes me as at best optimistic. I'm, I'm not so sure I even buy it because the foam is barely a half inch thick, probably on the order of a centimeter, which means that this foam would have an R value per inch of a pretty impressive seven or more. And inside this tubing of 180 degrees Fahrenheit, and the ambient, as I indicated, is around 65 degrees Fahrenheit. And in Celsius, this would be 82. And down here, the ambient would be somewhere around 20 degrees centigrade. So this is a pretty good delta T, as we've talked about. And if you insulate it, you put an R value of three. I'm not sure how long you can hold the heat in these PEX tubes. And I think since this only heats up on the order of once a day, I can't imagine I could ever insulate these pipes enough for them to stay reasonably warm by the time the boiler kicks on to heat the hot water again. And the heating cycle kicks on when the tank drops from 125 degrees Fahrenheit down to somewhere around 115 degrees Fahrenheit. So the temperature of the water in the tubes can only drop from 180 down to 115, which is not a very big drop. So this is only about halfway to ambient temperature. And if the temperature in the tubes drops below 115, then the boiler's gonna have to recycle it all, all over again. So as an example, if the water in tubes were 125 degrees, for example, and the boiler kicks on, then some of that heat would be delivered to the tank and it wouldn't be wasted. But anything below 115, the boiler's just gonna have to replace it all. You know, with a topic like this, there's hundreds of things we could touch on in this video. It could go on for an hour. But I just hit a couple of the big ones that I thought were important for this particular situation. Your circumstances may certainly be different. Well, that's all I got for this one. If you've made it this far, maybe it's because you're faced with a similar sets of decisions. And if so, hopefully this video is maybe giving you something to think about. As always, like, subscribe, stay safe, take care, and keep your eyes off for the next one.